Welcome to The State of Us. Real people with honest opinions and the future of responsible media. Here's your host, Justin T. Weller. Hey, Lance, did you know the world got better in 2018? Despite everything going wrong, everything that you may not have liked about 2018, we're here to tell you that it may have been just the best year in history. And you're probably thinking, uh, what? Hey, you got to be upbeat every once in a while. I uh, Yeah, you, know, you do. You do. Sometimes there's good stuff that uh, happened. You got to take time to smell the roses. I I couldn't I I couldn't say it better. Uh, but Nicholas Kristoff of the New York Times uh, on Sunday, January sixth, wrote the following: Perhaps it seems Pollyannish or tasteless to trumpet progress at a time when there is so much butchery, misrule, and threat hanging over us. But I cover the butchery and misrule every other day of the year. And I do this annual column about progress to try to place those tragedies in perspective. One reason for this column is that journalism is supposed to inform people about the world. And it turns out that most Americans and citizens of other countries, too, are spectacularly misinformed. Uh, what a notion, Lance. Yeah. Journalism is supposed to inform people. That's crazy. That's pretty good stuff. It's crazy. He writes well. So uh, let's just let's let, let's lay the groundwork. Well, why do you care about the good stuff that happened? Uh, let's let's start with that because right? it makes you feel better when you know uh, something good has happened in the world. Mm-hmm. You feel better for a little while, and if you feel better, you smile. And if you smile, other people smile, and then life's not as bad, and you live longer. You don't get as uptight. You don't have to take all that medicine and. Everything else for yeah. your for your high blood pressure and things. It's like, hey, I can sit back and reflect and say, the world's getting better. There are some things that we actually are doing well. Well, we actually know too that uh, that's why I care. I mean, you know, I like to hear good stuff because mm-hmm. so many times we we focus, and I know I do, focus on the negative and look for the bad. Well, here's some good things that that have happened. So that's right. Hey, feel good about being on this planet for a few for a few hours, maybe. Especially when it's supported by reality. I mean, that's a whole other thing, right? It's it's one thing to just think it's positively, facts. and we could talk yeah, about the benefits facts. of that. But yeah, these are you can fact check us, and it's this, fact, and it's this, true. This is really happening. This is the real deal. It's not if, maybe, when. It's a uh, now, right? It's it's already happened or is happening. But l- let's talk about first um, the negativity of the world. We'll start with that. For example, nine out of ten Americans, Lance, say in polls that global poverty is worsening or staying the same. Nine out of 10 Mm -hmm. Americans think that poverty is worsening or is staying the same, global. When in fact, the most important trend in the world is arguably a huge reduction in poverty. Until about the 1950s, a majority of humans had always lived in, quote, extreme poverty, end quote. That's defined, by the way, extreme poverty as less than $2 per person per day. Okay. Okay. That's what extreme poverty is. However, in the 1980s, 44% of the world's population lived in extreme poverty. Today, fewer than 10% of the world's population lives in extreme poverty. And that includes adjustments for inflation, by the way, for those of you wondering. That's that not, we're not good. still talking $2. You know, it's right, rel- right, right. Yeah, it, it'll all change. So. Yeah. So, I mean, 44% down to 10% since the 1980s, right? I mean, what, about just say 40 years, a little less than 40 mm-hmm. years, we've uh, dropped 34% off the extreme poverty scale of the world. Yep. But that's, again, that's a mindset thing. 90% of Americans don't think that's the case. Likewise, Americans estimate that 35% of the world's children have been vaccinated. So you and I, Lance, and our listeners, right, they think about 35% of the world's kids have been vaccinated, when in fact, 86% of all one-year-olds have been vaccinated against some of the most common illnesses. So we don't... I mean, that's like we're not even in the right ballpark. Right, right. We, we have like, no clue what's going on in the rest of the world. No, none. And that includes our own country. I mean, that's a, you know, but when asked about... How kids are being vaccinated around the world. Americans estimate that it's 35% of the kids and it's 86%. 
It's not quite as bad as we all thought. We don't pay any attention. No. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, let's face it. We don't, we think it's bad because we honestly don't have a clue because we don't pay attention to what's going on. Yep. I mean, how much out there is news about, see, here I am. I'm going negative again with positive <laughs> news. But how much is out there about the rest of the world? I mean, I know where I get most of my foreign news. Where is that? It's from a, a monthly news magazine that I know is slanted towards, you know, global warming, taking care of animals, people, smog, pollution. You know, I mean, I know that that magazine has that covers tilt. those topics in a left leaning way, but that's the only thing I get on a regular basis that tells me what's going on outside the United States. Mm-hmm. So we need more. I mean, that, you know, that, that's what, I mean, that's the question that pops in my head is where do we go to find this stuff? Because obviously it's not being given to us in daily doses by the current news media. Yep. But anyway, I mean, it's over twice, right? 35 to 86%. Yeah. This New York Times columnist says- that's, that's wonderful news. Says that he's covered- uh, atrocities against the Rohingya in Myanmar, which we have as well, mm-hmm. starvation in Yemen, climate change in Bangladesh, refugees and child marriage at home, and some of the world's worst poverty in Central African Republic. But he also has wrote columns or newsletters about three nations that registered outstanding progress against authoritarianism and poor governance in 2018. Armenia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, and Malaysia all made substantial progress in moving towards being a more republic and by the people kind of uh, governance, which is great news. It is. It's really I, good news. Truthfully, that's one I didn't know. I hadn't heard anything about that. Yep. Armenia, Ethiopia, and Malaysia. Congratulations in uh, moving in the right direction. Yes. So, but Lance, I saved some of the some of the perhaps most upsetting things uh, for last year. I mean, they're really good news. It's upsetting that I guess we didn't that we didn't know this. Okay, uh, that's what I'm getting at. Each day, on average, about another two hundred and ninety five thousand people, almost three hundred thousand people, every day around the world gained access to electricity for the first time. That's last year. Every day of 2018, another 300,000 people gained electricity, access to electricity. Do you for think the it's first because time. now uh, let's take a, a different? I'll take a different tact here. Do you think it's because we just here in America assume people have these? Is, I, is that why we're surprised? Or maybe or it's do we the think, opposite. Or do we think that everybody else is just still living in a I in think, a log cabin or a hut somewhere? I think it's probably more of that. That way. Yep. I think it's we think us and Europe and Russia and China, and that's that's it. And I, I think probably our, our our thought, you know, our stereotype about China because of so much of the negative news, mm-hmm. late 90s through the 2000s about China, child labor, all that kind of stuff, is that it's mostly a third world country that has some people living in the first world. But as we covered on the China rules thing before, it's really – that's not really the case. I mean in a a very short period of time, in like 30 years, they've totally reversed that that way they were going. Mm -hmm. It's not to say they don't have major problems, but it's completely different. I think it's more of that, that we just think that except for a a select few countries, like pretty much the entire continent of Africa, the entire continent of South America – most of Asia. You know, I don't even think we list India uh, when it's in reality the wor- one of the world's fastest growing economies mm-hmm. and one of the world's largest. I mean, they have over a billion people. They're like a China that way, you know. But it, it doesn't even. It's not one of those things that I think for most people comes to mind. Uh, so again, three hundred thousand people around the world gained access every day to electricity for the first time, and to continue that. Every day last year, Lance, every day, 305,000 people were able to access clean drinking water for the first time. And that's been huge. Yep. And that's been something that all kinds of foreign foreign aid, Red Cross, 
have been working on um, in, in many of those places that you've mentioned. You know, so that's that's good to see that that's coming to fruition. Now, a lot of that has to do with technology. Yes. You know, as technology has gotten better, it's cheaper and easier to bring the the items that are necessary for this to happen to to these more out of the way locations or to these poorer nations because technology has made it cost effective to to bring it. Yeah, it, well and that's that's obviously a big part of why some of these advances. I mean, you might be sitting there trying to do the math and we'll have Lance do the math here cuz he's our mathematician. Uh, I mean, what is it, Lance, if we say 295,000, just call it 300,000 because that'll make it easy for a few of these numbers. 300,000 every day. So what's 300,000 times 365? I'll give you a second to do that one. I see. Uh, That's nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that, that one's not a, not a tip of your tongue kind of one. Probably. Well, it would be close to what? 9 million people a month. Yeah. Cause it'd be 300,000 people every 10 days. I mean, if you have three thousand right. or three hundred thousand, yeah. it would be three million people every, every ten, 10 days, days. So about so you put thirty nine. days in a month, so you've got about nine million people a month times twelve. Just so people know how I get this, you'd have one point eight billion people. This is all in my head, folks. Well, no, wouldn't it be one hundred and twenty-eight million people, not billion? Okay, so I've got nine million people a month times twelve. So it's one hundred and eight yeah. million. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. You're right. You're right. I don't think we're in the billion. 108, 108 oh, okay. million. You're right. I had one too many zeros in my brain. Uh, yeah. Well, still. Um, now, That's an amazing know, number. It is. It is. And and yes, is it. And those of you that grew up with using calculators, you do that in your head and see how fast you get it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Use your calculator and see if you get it even as fast as we did talking it out loud. Yeah. Yeah. With um, no electronics in the studio. Mm, that's right. Yes. For doing well, math. Well, yeah, I was going to say for doing math. I, mean, I didn't, <laughs> there's I lots didn't of even pick up my pen or my scratch pad or nope. anything. Nope. That was all brain function. It was all brain power. So uh, thank you to my elementary teachers for playing those multiplication games when I was in third and fourth grade. Here's your last, here's your last thing, Lance. So take that number, right? Okay. 100, du- 108 million. Double it. 108 million would be 216 million. 216 million people last year were able to get online for the first time. 216 million or approximately 620,000 people every day. Wow. Got online for the first time. It's a big deal, right? Um, I mean, part of... We, information is key, right? How much do we talk about? Yeah. Information, information and education is, is the key to making a better world. And Wow. You know, there's so many implications of that because we talk about a lot of the negative effects of technology. Uh, but recent data that I was looking at has indicated that Generation Z, who's the generation behind me, I'm a millennial. Uh, they're the ones that the oldest of them right now are 19, 20. That's the oldest. Uh, and then, you know, the youngest obviously is all the way back at eight or something. Uh, so keeping that in mind, Oh, we're still that, not in a Z generation? We started something else? No, we're in Z. That's what I'm saying. I mean, okay, so the kids born today are still Zs? No, I don't know what they well, are. That's what I'm saying. I don't think they get a name yet. Oh, they're not named. Okay. I don't, maybe they are, but I, they're not important enough. They're too young they to be important, not be, apparently. They to be named yet. Okay. Yeah. Which, as we've talked about, it probably should be the opposite, right? The younger they are, the more important they should be, because that's our opportunity to change the world right there. It's with the young people, not the, not the rest of us. I don't know anymore. Up to age five, I thought so. Is the most formative years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's what that's I, what the I, facts are. I used to I used to think us. that. I don't know anymore. Okay, because the people who are teaching the the pre fives are are scary people sometimes. Okay. Uh, well, that doesn't mean that that's not the most formative time. It just means that the people <laughs> means they're not teaching them the right things. <laughs> well, yeah, it could mean that, but it doesn't make it not the most. So that's form- scary. <laughs> well, that would be scary. Yes, because what are we forming? Well. That's that's what are, what are we making? That's a different conversation. What are we making down there? But the implication, Lance, though, see, see, there I go. I'm not being positive. I here. know, despite despite all the negative stuff that we do talk about, right. and I don't know if it's negative as much as it is just trying to make sure people are thinking about the implications of technology. Because really, I mean, as Lance highlighted, technology is a huge reason as a whole that so much of this has improved. Um, and it's not just, you know, laptops and that kind of thing, smartphones. It's not those necessarily that have made 
as big a difference as some of the things that computers and connectivity have enabled us to figure out. It's like we said so often in 2018, it's not that the solutions don't exist, it's that we haven't implemented them or we don't know the solutions exist. And for a lot of the world, that's what it continues to be. It's not that we don't know how to solve a lot of their problems. We do. It's that we just, we haven't connected them to the, to have the ability to solve it. Uh, the solution exists already. So one of the great things too, and the reason I was bringing up this generation discussion before, Generation Z, uh, the, the age right now that's in the, you know, going into middle school, in middle school and high school, these mm-hmm. kids mm-hmm. just entering college. Uh, data tells us that they are more, they have a better sense of they are more like their peers globally than any other generation. So in other words, mm. an American Gen Z is much more similar to a Chinese Gen Z than Lance is to a Chinese baby boomer. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I know that. Sorry, I laid it out a little weird. But no, I understand what you're saying. There and and a big part of we're that more globally interconnected. We're more globally in any interconnected. Other time yes, in the history of the world. And the downside of that is while, yes, there may be some degradation of individual cultures, there also is an increasing understanding of other cultures because of the ability to know what's happening in other places as it happens. We don't have to wait 20 years to read about the book that came out that talked about this thing that happened back then. We can find out as it's happening and we can talk to the people in those countries that it's happening to. Uh, Unless all we're doing is playing Fortnite. Right. Well, but even then, I mean, we, we laugh. I'm, I'm impressed that you know about Fortnite. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I, I coach the, these well, that, yeah. Z okay. people that you okay. talk about. That's true. So They're I come in Fortnite. contact with them, you know, six, seven days a week. But there's a lot of negative news about, you know, violent video games right now. Right. Uh, but there's, but on the flip side of that, one of the big positives, think about it. Uh, some of the most powerful moments in human history revolve around different cultures engaging in friendly competition, you know, Mm -hmm. and that mutual understanding of we all want to achieve this thing, or we all want to have fun, or whatever it is. And what a great way to build understanding without having to consciously build it. Well, you hope it breaks down some of the stereotypes, too. Mm -hmm. And everybody does learn to get along because you realize you are more like other people. Right. You're not different because you grew up in America or you're not different because you grew up in the South or the West or the North or whatever. You're, we we are all very similar. Yes. We still have our individual differences or quirks or regional differences or quirks, but um, overall we still all want the same things. Yep. Well, and I think that's, and that goes back to the, you know, all of this is so important because we talk about, the, you know, people who gain access to electricity and water, kind of the basic life necessities, but the coming online is becoming one of those. Um, and it is part of how the world and these places, especially when you talk about spreading democracy or, uh, you know, spreading the idea of a representative style government, those types of governments thrive in places where there's free flow of information. Mm-hmm. Part of why it doesn't thrive in China right now is because the government heavily restricts that. Same thing in Russia. They very aggressively tailor what people are able to access. But the way that revolutions take hold uh, is when people can freely disseminate information with each other uh, because that's how people learn about the bad stuff that's going on. And that's why this is a kind of two-way street of what we're talking about. The news shouldn't just be bad. It also has to be good um, because the good leads to learning about the bad, which leads to more good. It's all a, a means to an end, right? A vertical. So Lance, tell us, why are we taking time to talk about this today? I mean, I literally just explained it, but <laughs> why, don't, why don't you tell us what, what True Chat is trying to accomplish? Well, the things that we wrote down say that our mission is to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations. Okay. I think we're definitely doing yeah, that. Yeah, we wrote that down and put it on a sign. Yes. In, in our, that in, did happen. In, in, in our like uh, legal lease stuff too. Yes. Yeah, our bylaws. 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 Yes. yes. I was thinking. Well, actually, so. I knew it wasn't unilaws, but I couldn't think of unilaws. 
<laughs> what trilaw? It's not the unilaw. Unilaw. It was okay. a bylaw. It's a bylaw. Uh, bylaw. Okay. All right. Uh, the puns. <laughs> um, fun fact, though the the um, there's a there's a meeting coming up where they have to where oh, our crap. I missed the meeting last night. Our <laughs> I was going to come to the meeting. Yeah, it was I just, forgot to tell you. It was just and I didn't show up last night. Well, it's okay. It, so the mission actually was just ratified. See, that's the fun thing, the change to it, because mm-hmm. it is one of those things. We don't talk about this a lot. I mean, we mention the mission, right? Pretty much every, every episode. Uh, but the, the way that True Chat's structured is in a very serious way where the, the mission is respected in that, as Lance highlighted, it is in the bylaws. Mm-hmm. Um, so the old mission was actually still in there until, oh, okay. until just yesterday. When really? Was, this was that new? When it was officially approved. Okay. So, yeah. Even though- I even voted for it, so I'm glad Well, that's passed. good. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. I would have voted for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, I went to that basketball game and I forgot about the meeting. Uh, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it happens. <laughs> it's okay. You know, the less people at the meetings, the faster they go, right? That's, that's the, true. Yeah. That, but that's the I was whole just thing thinking of everybody else. About. Yeah. Right. I was thinking of everybody else. Mm-hmm. So now probably something got passed that I don't like, but- <laughs> Because that's why I go, you know? <laughs> that's right. You got to watch out for that stuff. They sneak stuff in on you. Yep. Hence the power of I know. information. Yes. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I'm down to like a half a bottle of water and one Werther's per show now. So I that's probably been taken away too. <laughs> <laughs> we're cutting all resources. Uh, I no, only, you I were, only get Werther's hey, on the days that have an S in it or something. <laughs> you were given an additional option today. You were offered a Jolly Rancher. Ooh, okay. See, so you got water, your Werther's, and then you or were introduced that you could also get a Jolly Rancher. Must have been on sale at Dollar General or something. <laughs> Jolly Rancher sale. Actually, truthfully, the Jolly Ranchers in my office are um, a bag of candy from uh, Halloween. Leftover, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pass the leftovers on to the staff. Look, we got new candy, people. Yeah, new candy from 2015. <laughs> hey, it's it's perfectly fine. It's still sealed, so. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that kind that's stuck to the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Got to eat some paper with it. To it's melted and frozen it. four yeah. different times. <laughs> sure, we'll pass uh, this off on on the uh, the old liberal over there. Okay, there you go. Right, yeah. The See, redneck, he'll eat anything. <laughs> hey, let Mikey try it. He'll eat anything. For those of you who you don't understand that, but no. for the old people, that's a life cereal commercial. A life cereal commercial. You don't even know about life cereal, do you? No. There was a cereal yeah. called Life? Life. There was a cereal called Life, and these little boys are all sitting around the table, and they don't know about it because they've never eaten it, and they let their little brother, hey, give it to Mikey. Mikey will eat anything. And so Mikey says, hey, Mikey likes it. And then they all take the box and pour cereal into their bowl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. Is that is that cer- cereal <laughs> still around? Life cereal? I don't know. I never had it. <laughs> I didn't read it. Okay. I just know the commercial. But well, the commercial was The commercial memorable, was apparently. big, yeah. Okay. It's it, like that Wendy's commercial. But it little, didn't get you to buy it. No. It's like that Wendy's commercial where a little lady goes, where's the beef? Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't know that was a Wendy's commercial. See? I remember the commercial, but not that it was It was a Wendy's, Wendy's. commercial. Yeah. Well, see, some marketing doesn't work the way we think. <laughs> Worked on me. Well, it got you to remember it. Yeah. But you said you don't go to Wendy's because it's too expensive. Well, I eat the chicken at Wendy's. Okay, well. <laughs> but the beef is, I mean, it's, it's like a doctor thing. Yeah. It's hardening those arteries. Okay. <laughs> Try to stay away from that red meat. Is that what it's doing? Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't give up fried foods. I just give up red meat. Okay. I mean, you got to start somewhere. Collect the visceral fat. <laughs> That's the fat that builds up around stuff internally, your organs and stuff. Is it? Uh-huh. That's what the National Geographic was on this past. It's probably why he's having me take a Libertor. Right. This month. Taking some kind of yeah. statin Something. medicine, I think is what know. it is. I'm not a doctor. I don't know, me either. This show is not intended to serve as professional medical yeah, advice. Yeah, just at a Holiday <laughs> Express once. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, no. Nothing we say is of any medical use, probably. <laughs> you know, you were talking about technology, and where I went with was going with it in my mind at the time was – this idea of drones, because I hate drones, right? Everybody knows there's a regular listener of the show. I hate drones. The redneck liberal doesn't like the drones. But I was reading this article a few months ago, and it was talking about how they're getting medicine to, you know, places that would take weeks to 
because there's no roads or the roads get washed out or whatever. And people would actually, you know, be getting sick and, and dying because they couldn't get their medicine that, that with the, you know, what do you call that stuff where you can bounce stuff off the satellites and get the directions to fly the drone? GPS. There you go. They could use the <laughs> GPS in the mountains to fly the drones, to fly medicine into these villages to keep people alive when the bridges had been washed out or there had been a mudslide and the road so was positive. covered. And I mean, yeah, you know, there's a positive use for it. Uh-huh. Uh, f- uh, quick so, question for you. Anyway, what it's does, great with my, my technological knowledge there, right? It's yes. Just, it's huge. Yes. Well, we're going to, we're going to test it a little five, bit more. 5G, baby. I know all about 5G. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did that show on it, right? What's the G stand for? Uh, generation. Yes. See? Okay. Now here's another one. What's GPS stand for? Now wait. Global positioning satellite. System. You were close. Damn, come but on. I suppose that would work too. Well, see, no, it wouldn't because it's, it refers yeah, it does. to the, it starts with an S. It, it works. It refers to the entire system. <laughs> oh, the system. Yeah. Okay. Both the satellite and the de- receiving device. Okay. Or the device that's communicating with the satellite to position you. I don't use it. So it Do you know matter. how GPS works? I don't care because I don't use it. It's real, it's real basic principle. Is it? Yeah. I mean, basically, what the device that you're holding, typically your phone nowadays, but you know, when the you, man knows where you, when you are. could buy the GPS, yeah. um, the way it works is it basically listens for different signals from multiple satellites. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it uses that to decide where its position is relative to those devices. I just pull out my paper map and look at the roads and see where I need to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I still travel like Lewis and Clark. Okay. Well, they were they were crafting a map. <clears throat> they had a map. Okay. Until after they got to St. Louis, and after that, then they had to make a new map. <laughs> no good anymore. <clears throat> yep. So what happens to GPS if they decide they if AI decides they want to lie to you? Well, AI can't decide to do that yet. It will. Maybe if we let it. Yeah. Or maybe it'll just start thinking on its own and say, I'm going to drive all these people off a cliff. How will it do? How will it gain spontaneous consciousness? It's going to. Okay. That's why you got to stop it now. Yeah? Yeah. Just stop all technology. Just throw it all away. No more drones to help those poor people who need it. Nope. (laughs) Come down out of the mountains if you want your medicine. (laughs) Okay. I mean, I do. I have to leave my house to get my medicine. Yeah. I mean, I could have it shipped to me, but I don't, you know, don't trust that. <laughs> what? Wait, wait. Okay. I was going to end the show, but I have to tell. Why don't you trust the postal service to deliver your medicine? And you never know what's going to happen to them. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. My mail keeps getting there later and later and later. I may need it. <laughs> okay. So you're not, it's not a privacy concern. It's a practicality. Well, there is that too. Then people know what I'm taking and they know. You know, How are they going to know what you're taking? Because they read the box. Well, it doesn't say on the outside of the box what it is. Oh. Well, it shouldn't. <laughs> they can open it and then retape it. Yeah. That'd be a violation of federal law. Oh, like that's never happened before. <laughs> There's never been a violation of federal law no. in the history of the United States. Not once. You know, the Postal Service now has this really neat thing where you can sign up to know what's in your mail before you get your mail. Why would you, that, that spoils all the fun. That's why I walk out to the mailbox. Well, the thing like is, getting presents every it's, day. It's supposed to be like a new safety feature that would keep you from opening something that uh, was harmful. You know, because what it what happens is basically they it, it goes through all the pieces of mail go through a scanner and it takes an infrared image of the contents of the package and then it will send that to you. It'll send you a text and say this is. Well, it's arriving. dangerous. Why are they sending it to me? They ought to stop it there. Well, that's not, you know, they don't want to infringe on your freedom. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> they'll just. <laughs> I thought it was against the law to send dangerous stuff. Well, it is. But that well, then they should catch it. But, but that doesn't stop you from putting dangerous stuff oh, in the so package. Oh, so they can deliver it to me. <laughs> and then send hey, it. this is dangerous, but we're delivering it anyway because <laughs> you have the right to get dangerous stuff. I don't know. I don't It's against make the, the law rules. for Justin to send this to you, but we're letting you know that he's sending you dangerous stuff. He's sending you nerve gas. So if you open it, it's on you. <laughs> well, then they let you know. Freedom, Lance. That's what you want, right? Freedom. <laughs> Now, I guess. 
No, but the system does exist. I haven't. You should have stopped the show it. already. That was that was way too but, out there. But I think we should sign Lance up for it and see see what he thinks. I bet I could do that. I could probably go online, enter your address, say, "Yeah, I'm Lance," and put in your phone number, and then say, "Okay, here we go." And then, so when you get a text later today that says we're going to start sending you updates about your incoming mail, <laughs> they're going to text me. Yeah, they can text, send you an email. Damn it. Make it an email because I never checked that. <laughs> That's right. That's why I went to the meeting. Why, no, I read it. That, I read it, dude. That's why it was in my mind that I had to come to the meeting on Thursday. And then Coach said, well, we're the, gonna, the question, though, is when did you read it? Like last week, I had time to let you know I was coming. <laughs> okay. I, I was just going to crash it, though. Okay. Because I don't like Boom, that. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. He I was going to see what you were going to offer to eat without me being here. Didn't want to RSVP. <laughs> I didn't. I don't like to RSVP because then that like commits you. Because <laughs> then you feel bad if you don't yeah. show up because they yeah. counted on you being there. Right. But on the flip side, don't they also feel bad then if you show up because they didn't get enough food? That's their problem, not mine. <laughs> You're okay. going to host something. You always have to have enough food for everybody. Okay. Plus 10% extra. What if more than 10% done RSVP? Then you better have uh, pizza on speed dial. Okay. Hey, you need two more Or Domino's because they deliver for free. Okay. Or get a hold of that Uber app thing. Domino delivers for free? Yeah. Really? I don't think so. I don't, I've always paid for, I think I've always, I don't know now. Now I'm questioning that. I can't remember if I've paid for Domino's delivery. I think Domino delivery. Well, I'm sure we do pay for it. It's just, they don't tell you that you're paying for it. It's built in somewhere. I thought it was 30 minutes or less and free. Uh, Well, yeah. If they can't get it there in 30 minutes, if they can get it there in 30 minutes, then you pay the delivery fee. Oh. So they charge you the two, whatever, you know, the three bucks to deliver it. Yeah. And then if it takes longer than 30 minutes, they give you your money back. Hey, Domino's, get a hold of us. Let us know. That's right. Hey, Is it free delivery? I need you to take at least 31 minutes to get here. <laughs> no, I thought it was free delivery for Domino's. It's not? No, I don't think so. Oh, I, think, I think you're right. It's the 30 minutes or less. Well, they won't deliver down my road, so it doesn't matter. Oh, well. I, only Pizza Hut will come out to my street. That's the same thing out here where we are at the studio. Yeah. It's the same thing. Only Pizza Hut. So, Pizza Hut it is. Ooh, favorite pizza place in town. We'll end on that. I don't like anything in town. You don't like any pizza? So you never eat pizza? No, I didn't say I don't eat it. I just... If you have to... Always being squirrely. If you have to have pizza... Depends on the mood I'm in. Oh, my goodness. Okay. It's usually Pizza Hut or Domino's. Okay. Fair. So but there's but so, there's there's one pizza I like from the the, the in town place. Okay. And like the other night, I just had a hankering for Casano's, and I yeah. went and got Casano's salty pizza. I haven't had Casano's in. Oh, it's thin crust, loaded with stuff. Can't and, think of when. Yeah. See, I get the pan pizza from Pizza Hut, so the real thick, fluffy crust. Then, then all you're eating is bread. I love bread. I know, but I like I toppings. Mean, but bread with cheese and meat, it's like a sandwich. Yeah. It's great. Not Donato's <laughs> is, is pizza. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Donato's or Dom? I thought you said Domino's. You said in town. We have a Domino's. I know. So, I, yeah. So, I get that. That's oh, you're saying thing. Donato's is where you would go yeah. if there wasn't But I have Donato's. to leave town to get that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I was confused. Didn't we used to have a Donato's? Or no, oh, it was a Papa John's. We had a Papa John's. I love Papa John's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no hey, Papa John's close. Despite all the negative, you know, whatever about Papa John's uh, himself, it was good pizza. The pizza's good. The pizza's good. Yeah. I like the pizza. I do too. All so. right. Let us know your thoughts at True Chat or her G on pizza. Uh, tell us tell us good news about your year. And you can listen to True Chat podcasts everywhere that fine podcasts are found. Right, Lance? Yep. Apple, Stitcher, po- Spotify. Apple, Stitcher, the Apple. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For the state of us on True Chat in Urbana. I'm Justin T. Weller. And I'm Lance Jackson. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Be the change.